we saw in our acceleration program how objects in free fall, regardless of how heavy they are, accelerate at a rate of 9.8 meters per second per second, at least initially before air resistance increases too much. In this episode of the Shedding Light on Motion series, we're going to graphically examine the motion of objects that are in free fall. Let's look first at the motion of a falling ball dropped from a really tall building. Here we go, drop. It's not a real ball, but the distances here are to scale. Since the acceleration of a falling object is 9.8 meters per second per second, after falling for one second, an object will reach a velocity of 9.8 meters per second downwards. Then, after two seconds, it will have gained another 9.8 meters per second of velocity to reach 19.6 meters per second. And then after three seconds, it will have gained yet another 9.8 meters per second of velocity to reach 29.4 meters per second, and so on. Drawing up a velocity versus time graph is fairly easy. There's the first dot, there's the second, and so on. The velocity increases at a constant rate. The acceleration versus time graph is also fairly easy to draw. The acceleration is a constant 9.8 meters per second per second downwards. That's in fact why the velocity versus time graph has a constant gradient. Now we saw in our last episode that the area under a velocity versus time graph is a measure of an object's displacement. So we can use this VT graph to calculate the falling ball's displacement after one second, two seconds and so on, and then graph the results. Let me get rid of the AT graph first and put in a displacement versus time graph. At the beginning, the displacement was zero, of course. So our first dot goes here. By calculating the area under the velocity versus time graph up to the one second mark, we can work out the ball's displacement after one second. The area is half base times height, which equals 4.9 meters. After one second, the ball had fallen 4.9 meters, so I can place a dot in this position. In fact, when I jumped off the 5 meter diving platform, I hit the water in 1.02 seconds, so our graphs so far fit with reality, which is always a good thing of course. After 2 seconds, the area under the VT graph is half times 2 times 19.6, which equals 19.6 meters. This dot represents the information. Repeating this mathematical operation and then joining the dots with a curved line of best fit gives us this graph. You can see that as the ball got faster, it covered more and more distance each second. So the displacement versus time graph curves upwards. Graphs can help us to really understand how objects move. Looking at all three graphs at the same time, we can see that a constant acceleration leads to a steadily increasing velocity which leads to an increasingly increasing displacement. We can use the graphs to work out lots of information. For example, a ball is dropped from a tall building and it takes 4.2 seconds to reach the ground. How tall is the building and at what speed does the ball hit the ground? Reading off the VT graph... We can... Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on Motion Episode 5, Graphing Freefall. In this program, we continue looking at graphs, but pay particular attention to how graphs help us to understand the motion of objects that are either falling straight down or which have been launched vertically upwards into the air. The student worksheets and practical activities that accompany the Shedding Light on Motion series can be downloaded for free from our website at www.leacroseducationalmedia.com. Thanks again for watching.